hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial brought to you by City Skyline Nations. What we'll be trying to do here is make a little village and raise it to a population of 1000. This is a guide for very, very new players to the game who are maybe struggling getting set up with the basics. First thing we'll do when we start the game is build a little road anywhere. It doesn't really matter and we're going to delete it straight away. What this does is unlocks these other road segments. For some reason they're, they're not available until you build a first segment of Little Road. Now what we want to do is go to the medium road section, get this four lane road, and build a rectangle, like so. It's very important not to join these two roads, and I'll explain why in a second. Now once we've got the main rectangle, we want to go back to small roads, select the two lane road, and build these little offshoots, like so. We can build three on this side and three on this side there we go what we'll do with these is this allows us to separate our zones we'll put all our residential buildings here a few commercial ones in the middle and this will be left for industry but before we do that we need to sort out water and electricity now there are two water systems in this game you've got items such as the water pumping station this brings water into your city. Once it's used, it turns into sewage and it goes out through this water drain pipe. Now, the main thing you need to remember is that the water pumping station needs to be built upstream from the sewage works, like so. If these were built the other way around, then the sewage would go into the water, float down into your pumping station, and this dirty sewage water will get pumped right back into your town. This will make all your sims very, very ill. So make sure you get these two the right way around. Once you have those built, everything needs to be connected up using pipes. So we connect those two buildings, stretch that out over here, and we're going to make a pipe going down a bit, and just go across in this little in this grid-like fashion. Now in this tutorial we're going to be expanding a bit further down, so we'll just make sure water goes into this area. That's all set up. Now as for electricity, you do have the option of starting with a coal power plant, however I think this is a bit overkill for a small village, so I tend to start with wind turbines. If we select those and look at the map, the dark areas are where there is most wind and therefore we'll get more electricity from a wind turbine. Now if we move around a little bit, we should be able to find somewhere that gives us an estimated production of 8 megawatts, like so. So we put that down, and the last thing we need to do for electricity is connect it via power lines. Now if we build a power line up here, split it out into this building, and then to that one, and from here, we'll put it to the corner of one of our zones. Electricity in this game flows from zone, flows through these pylons into these zones and travels across buildings. So what we need to do now when we start zoning is just zone this bottom layer. We'll uh, start the game and speed up a little bit. So we want that bit to be residential, we'll have a few commercial buildings here, and this bit will be industrial. There you go, we can already see people moving in, as always has been built. Now as these buildings get built, the electricity flows across them. The reason we haven't zoned all of this as residential just yet, is we want to make sure a line of buildings is created here, so the electricity goes into commercial and industrial. If residential just was created in a block here, there will be no way for the electricity to jump across until, unless we did build more pylons, which is, a, is an option, however we want to keep things, we want to try and do things without pylons at the start, just to keep everything looking neater and tidier. So as you can see, people are moving in, not sure if this will have, there you go, it's got a little electricity symbol, which means it's not getting electricity, however, as soon as some buildings are built here, it should sort itself out. So if we just hold on a second. Will that one do it? You can see we've already got a hundred people moving in, so that's going great. There you go. So the electricity can jump a gap of about one or two buildings width. And you can see everything here is getting power. Now that that's sorted, we can carry on zoning the rest of this town. Make this residential. Colour all that in. At the beginning of a the game there isn't much demand for commercial, so just leave one line there, and the rest of this is industrial. 
There you go. Now we'll let everyone move in. As I mentioned at the start, I didn't join these two intersections. What I find is if you do that, the road system here becomes far too complicated and there's a big backlog of traffic that starts to generate up into your highway. If you keep it separated, it seems to flow a lot nicer. So if we look here, now at the moment, we've probably got enough electricity for the 300 sims we've got. However, to get to a thousand, I find one windmill isn't quite enough, but you should be okay with three. Now, I don't think we can get another eight megawatt one here, but two sevens should be enough. And obviously we can look up here at the bar about how much we're consuming and how much we're generating. That looks fine. And water. These two buildings produce quite a lot of water capacity, so you're not going to have to worry about water until your town gets a lot, lot bigger. So, the only thing you're waiting for now is more people to move in and for this to reach 500. Once it reaches 500, that's the first milestone in the game, and that'll give us access to a few more services. So, if we just watch these buildings be built. Everything looks good. And there we go. Little Hamlet, population of 500. Now, this opens up a few more features, but... The one we're mostly interested in is this landfill site. Now, all these buildings create garbage, and if that's left unchecked, you're going to have some serious, serious problems. Nobody likes living next to dirty, dirty bins. So, what we're going to do is expand the town a bit more down this way. Make another rectangle. And another little offshoot road. Let's just turn up the speed again. Actually, one on this side, and make two over here. Now if we go into the garbage tab, get the landfill site and stick it here. The landfill site as well as the industrial zones create a lot of pollution. Not only pollution in terms of uh, the smog and, and the filthiness, also sound pollution. So what you want to do when you expand is try and keep your residential areas away from this area. I'll keep everyone happy. No one wants to live next to a garbage site or a noisy factory. Now, if we carry on zoning this area, turn all this into housing, and we can put some more industry here, and a few more commercial buildings. Now, if we leave that to run, that should take us to a population of at least 1,000. It's always worth checking up on your electricity every now and then. We're still in the green, so there's going to be no issues there. We don't need to expand just yet. Water's fine, and we're not going to have any need for extra garbage space for quite a while. If you were to carry on expanding the city, there would be lots, lots of options you have. However, a good idea would be to start putting in some education buildings and paying very close attention to how traffic behaves on these junctions. It's okay now, no major issues. However, you may want to have a um, another four lane road going across here and when you get public transit it's always an idea to set up say for example a bus route in this residential area to take people to work or once you get access to the train station you'd have a cargo station in your industrial area to take cargo in and out of the city but as you can see we're at a population of over 900 at the moment we've almost reached the goal of this tutorial just need to wait a few more seconds. Everyone seems relatively happy. Just need about 30 more people. Where are we going to live? All these houses are still being built. Almost there. Looking nice. And there we go. Population 1000. So as you can tell, this is, this is a very basic setup. There's a lot you can do to improve this. But if we just quickly go back into the game, let's see what we've accomplished. So we've got an industrial zone away from a residential, a bit of commercial in the middle. We've got our power and our water set up. And we've got a situation where everyone's happy. And more importantly, we've got positive cash flow here. What this will allow us to do is if we wanted to experiment with different things, for example, maybe uh, buying more land, putting in more services. You've now got fire department and police to worry about. As long as you have a positive cash flow, even if you mess up, you can always go back and you'll have enough money to, to sort your town out. Well, thank you for listening here. Uh, any comments you have would be much appreciated. And keep an eye out for more tutorials from City Skyline Nations.